Hi there, today we're talking about zero and negative exponents. And uh, when we start looking at this, if we look at the following, uh, we're just going to identify the pattern that's happening here. So if I do 2 to the 4th power, that's going to give me a 16. If I do 2 to the 3rd power, it's an 8. Uh, 2 to the 2nd power is a 4. 2 to the 1st power is a 2. And those are the ones that we easily know how to do. But now let's watch the pattern here. If I go from 16 to 8 to 4 to 2, what's happening is I'm dividing by 2 every time which means 2 to the 0 power following this pattern would give me a 1. It also means that 2 to the negative first following the same pattern would give me a 1 half. I'm still dividing by 2. And then 2 to the negative second would give me a 1 fourth. So I keep dividing by 2 over and over again. And that tells us a couple things. One, uh, 2 to the 0 power being 1 is significant. But then also, these values down here, when we look at these negative exponents, which is the other thing we're going to look at here today, kind of reveals a little bit uh, about the nature of these things. If I have 2 to the negative first power, and eventually that equals a 1 half, and then I have 2 to the negative second power, which eventually equals a 1 fourth, I kind of think of that, that's like 1 over 2 to the first power. And this one is kind of like 1 over 2 to the second power. So it kind of shows us a little something uh, about how negative exponents might work as well. So if we look uh, ahead at some of these rules, the first one is the uh, zero is an exponent. Uh, anytime we have a non-zero number raised to a, a zero power, it's going to equal one. So we have a non-zero number a, so a being the number. Uh, when we have that, a to the zero is going to equal one. Okay. So if we look at this first one, 27 to the zero power, 27 is a non-zero number, so that's going to equal one. The next one, 829,073 to the zero power, it's also going to equal one. Here, negative uh, 17 uh, to the 0 power is also going to equal 1. Okay? And uh, really, technically, that one's actually going to equal a negative 1 uh, because I don't have parentheses around this guy. So I should have parentheses. But any non-zero or uh, any non-zero number raised to the 0 power is going to equal 1. Okay? In terms of negative exponents, for every non-zero number, uh, again, we're defining that number as a. And uh, an integer n, in other words, that's what we're using as our exponent. If I have a to the negative nth power, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over a to the nth power. So it makes us flip to the other side of the fraction bar and causes us to make the exponent positive. So 7 to the negative third power, I can rewrite as 1 over 7 to the third power. All right. Now, of course, I could simplify that by doing 7 to the third power. Uh, here, x to the negative second power is going to be 1 over x to the positive second power. I flip it to the other side of the fraction bar and make it positive. And then this last one is going to be 1 over a negative 17 to the fifth power. So it causes us to flip to the other side of the fraction bar, and that makes the exponent negative, all right? or makes the negative exponent positive. Um, in terms of using 0 as a base, uh, really we looked at something to the 0 power. We know that that's going to equal 1 every time. So 3 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 0 power is 1, 1 to the 0 power is 1. But now when I have 0 as a base, if I continued this pattern, I would assume that this would also equal 1. Okay? Uh, but if I look at the, the bottom row here, when I have 0 as the base, if I do 0 to the 3rd power, that's 0. If I do 0 to the 2nd power, that's 0. 0 to the 1st power is also 0. So by following this pattern, it would lead me to believe that 0 to the 0 power is 0. Okay, and so what we have here is somewhat of a contradiction. Uh, this really can't be done. And the thing we need to remember here uh, is that neither one of these is true. Okay? Neither of these patterns holds water because 0 to the 0 power is undefined. So just be careful. When those zeros start to collide, uh, bad things happen. So 0 to the 0 power is undefined. Any other non-zero number, which is why we had that, uh, that non-zero thing, in these first couple uh, examples. We can't have 0 as a base when raising to the 0 power, because that's undefined. Okay. Uh, if we look at something like this, we want to simplify these. So if we want to simplify this first one, uh, I can't do 9 to the negative second power the way it's written. I have to take care of that negative exponent, rewrite it as 1 over 9 to the second power. Now I can finish this problem. Okay, 9 to the second power is 81. Right? And that's why we have to understand how negative exponents work. For this one, since the 2 is in parentheses, the only thing that that negative 3 applies to 
is that 2. So the 3 would stay in the numerator. The 2 gets sent to the denominator, and I make it a positive exponent. And so now this becomes 3 over 8, because 2 to the third power is an 8. And now this last one, again, negative 3.6 in parentheses to the 0 power is going to equal a 1. And that's it. Okay, so using these rules of exponents. If we do that in simplifying an expression, let's see what that looks like. For this first one, again, consider what the exponents for these other things are. This is like 5 to the first power, a to the positive third power, and b to the negative second. Only the thing with the negative exponent is going to get sent to the denominator. In other words, the 5 is going to stay where it is because it has a positive exponent. The a to the third is going to stay where it is because it has a positive exponent. The only thing that moves is the b to the second is going to go to the denominator. Okay? Because we consider these things technically as being in the numerator to start because the whole thing's over 1. Okay? So now that one's taken care of. If I look at the next one, again, only the things with the negative exponents. This is 4 to the first power, regardless that that a is to the negative second. That negative 2 only applies to the a. So when I look at this, the 4 is going to stay where it is. The b squared is going to stay where it is. But now the a to the negative second I'm going to send to the denominator is a squared. And that c to the negative fifth that's already in the denominator, I'm going to flip that to the other side of the fraction bar. I'm going to bring it to the numerator and make it positive. Okay? So if I have a negative in the numerator, it goes to the denominator. If I have a negative in the denominator, it bumps up to the, the numerator. Okay? If I look at the next one, the uh, n to the fifth has a positive exponent, so it's going to stay exactly where it is. The thing that's going to move is the m to the negative third, and that's going to get sent to the denominator and become an m to the positive third. But now the thing that's left in my numerator, well, think about what the coefficient here would be. I can't see it, but I know it's there. It's a 1. So the thing that's left in my numerator is a 1. So I end up with 1 over n to the fifth, m to the third. Uh, if I look at this example, again, the things with the positive exponents, like the 2 to the first power here, stay where they are. So the 2 stays where it is. The x to the third stays where it is. The y to the negative second jumps to the denominator, becomes a positive second. And the z to the negative fourth in the denominator is going to go up to the numerator and become a z to the positive fourth. And that's it. So again, negative exponents cause it to flip to the other side of the fraction bar. Uh, for these, if we want to evaluate uh, the exponential expression, we've got some values we're going to plug in here. I would start by plugging things in. Whenever you plug things in, you should use parentheses. So this is 3a to the negative third times b to the second. And my a value is going to be a 2. My b value is a negative 3. And now I'm going to take care of these negative exponents. This negative exponent is going to get sent to the denominator, so this whole thing is going to become 3. Uh, the negative 3 to the second power stays where it is. The 2 to the negative third power goes to the denominator and becomes 2 to the third. And now I can simplify this thing. It becomes a 3 times 9 all over 8, which of course is going to reduce to a 27 over 8. And that's it. I just got to take it one step at a time. Always take care of those negative exponents before we start raising things uh, to the appropriate power. Uh, for this one, again, I've got C, A to the negative first, B to the second. I'm using parentheses to plug these things in. The negative 1 goes in here, the 2 goes in here, and the negative 3 goes in here. I'm going to take care of those negative exponents right away. The negative 1 has a positive exponent right here. Uh, the negative 3 also has a positive exponent, so it stays where it is. The only thing that goes to the denominator is this 2, so it becomes 2 to the first down here. And now I simplify this. That's going to be a negative 1 times 9 all over 2, which is a negative 9 over 2. And that's it. For this one, again, we start off the same way. We're going to use uh, parentheses to plug these things in. I'm going to start off going this way. So 2a to the negative fourth, uh, b to the negative first, all over c to the negative second. And I'm going to plug these values in. The a is a 2, the b is a negative 3, and the c is a negative 1. So I'm going to start flipping these things. Uh, almost everything except the 2 that's out front here has a negative exponent, so everything's going to switch. That 2 to the 4th is going to be in the denominator. 
uh, that th negative 3 to the first is going to be in the denominator, and that negative 1 to the second is going to be in the numerator. And I'll just continue to simplify this. The negative 1 to the, first or to the second power is 1, positive 1. Down here, 2 to the fourth power is 16. Uh, negative 3 to the first power is a negative 3. And now to finish simplifying this, uh, that's going to give me a 2 over a negative 48, which of course reduces to a 1 over negative 24, which technically I don't want to leave the negative in the denominator. I'll put it out front and make it a negative 1 24th. Okay? For this last piece, it says uh, a population of bacteria doubles every hour, modeling the equation 1,000 times 2 to the h, where h is uh, the number of hours after scientists have measured the population size. We don't know what was the scientist's initial measurement. So the initial measurement would be like time zero, because h is how long has passed after the initial measurement. So I'm going to plug a zero in for h and simplify this. And again, I do exponents first. So right here, the 2 to the 0 power is going to give me a 1. So that's 1,000 times 1, which is 1,000. So 1,000 is that initial population, uh, because that's what, what they measured at time 0. And then we can measure each uh, hour after that. So if we look at this, it says, what was the population three hours after the prior? Well, now we just want to plug a 3 in. And again, we want to follow order of operations when we do this. So we do 2 to the third power first, which is going to give me an 8. And then we multiply it by the 1,000, which gives me an 8,000 for my population after three hours.